Hey, hello, Ronnie. What's going on? Hey, Bart. How are you? Thanks for having me on. Yeah, no problem, Ronnie. You got a hand for us here? Okay, so this is played at a um, it's a house game. We play every other week with the same group of guys. Okay. Uh, we've been playing for about two years, so we know each other very well. Um, okay. Yeah, it's about three in the morning, five-handed. The, mm-hmm. the rest of the guys left um, uh, like at midnight or something. But um, the the preflop action was... So what's the size of the game, first of all? It's it's a one-two game. It's a one-two, but but uh, the stacks are, are high. It's uh, sometimes up to two, three grand. And you're 1,200 effective, is that right? 1,200 effective, yes. Okay, okay. Uh, so the preflop action, uh, small blind was in for one, big blind was in for two. Mm-hmm. Under the gun calls two. Cutoff raises to twelve. Uh, I'm at the big. I'm at the button. I call for twelve, and small blind calls for ten more, and big blind folds. So small blind calls, and what do you have? I have nine, ten of diamonds. So hero has ten of diamonds, nine of diamonds. Preflop UTG limps. Cut off to twelve. Hero on the button calls. Small blind calls. It's just a two blind game, right? I mean, sometimes you Correct. get three. I mean, because of that limp, and you might want to drive the limp out. I might be doing more three betting here than calling but i think at this depth calling is probably okay too but it seems like the limper folded out anyways right correct okay so limper folds but you do have the small blind in there so you're three ways and the pot's like 35 or 36 bucks right yep okay um yeah i mean to be exact it's 39 bucks to be um but the, the flop uh comes seven of diamonds eight of diamonds and jack of diamonds so jack of diamonds, eight of diamonds, seven of diamonds, and you have nine, ten of diamonds. You flop a straight flush. Is that right? That's correct. A straight flush. Okay. That's a pretty good flop for you. Very good flop. Okay. Um, and and obviously I'm excited here because um, yeah, I would the be too. Razor, yeah, the preflop razor is, is uh, very aggressive and uh, he, has, uh, he has me covered. So Okay. Uh, flop action is uh, small blind checks, mm-hmm. uh, under the gun checks, cut off bets 20. Now, wait a minute. I thought you said uh, under the gun. Was under the gun in the hand or, or no? I'm sorry. Yeah, under the gun. Um, yeah, he calls. Uh, the only folder was the big blind folder. Okay, so the pot is more like 47 and you go four ways. So under the gun checks, cut off C bets. How much? You, you know what? I'm, I'm yeah, so it's 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 forty something. You're right. Right. So under the gun, uh, checks, cut off bets twenty. Okay. Big black uh, button, which is me. I uh, I raised to forty five after like ten fifteen seconds of thinking. Okay. And the um, small blind and under the gun fold. And the cutoff calls. So small blind under the gun fold, cutoff call. So this is very very interesting talking about ultra fast playing because this is a rare move that you make but i like it where you actually fast play here right you fast play a straight flush you have actually raised here on the flop and i think a lot of people their gut instinct here would be oh i'm just gonna call here like i'm just gonna call what do i you know what am i scared of but i think that this sort of brings up that texture is really everything. I was thinking about this hand before the call-in show, and I was thinking about if I ever flopped a straight flush, like what types of boards would I not want to, would I not want to slow, would I want to slow play to maybe allow somebody to catch up to a boat? And one of the first things that kind of came up to my head was like ace, king, queen. Like if you had jack 10 suited and and it came out ace, king, queen, and you had the pre-flop razor like firing out here into you know, three or four people and you're like, wow, there's a good chance this, you know, this type of board really hit this guy, but it's a monotone board. So if I raise him, he's just going to go into check call shell. But if he fills up, I can get his entire stack. Now, with that being said, you can still raise and still get called. But on this board, there are so many scare cards. I mean, I, I kind of look at this as just similar to like flopping the nut flush. Like if you had called with like ace four of diamonds on the button and you decided to raise it up, I have no problem with that. I, I think it's one of the things where you get the most amount of action by sort of fast playing the nuts early. Now you could play devil's out can be, well, what if you get like seven, eight suited to fold behind you that could have filled up? Sure. I mean, that's, that's something. The only thing I would say is I'd probably raise just a little bit larger to build the pot up here. I mean, you're making it 45 here and you're 1200 effective. If I would raise, I probably would have made like a real raise to like 75, 80, but okay. So you go to 45, both the other people fold out and the preflop see better he calls 
So now we're at like 137. Yeah, and just a little justification. Um, the only reason I, I, I raised that amount is to keep the collar in. He knows I'm, I'm pretty tight. Um, so if I raised any, anything more, he may have folded. But also a raise on the flop makes sense to him because he never folds uh, like a semi-small raise on the flop. I guess it's kind of like an ego thing. Like he put in a bet, he's going to have to call a raise if it's semi-small. Um, and that, that's just my experience with him, you know, playing past two or three years. Well, I mean, that, it kind of just goes back to like you get the most amount of value early on in the hand because there's less scary things out there for one pair, right? Like if he's got like black yeah. kings, he's going to continue. But if you decide to raise the turn or if the turn comes like a nine or a 10, there's a lot of scare cards that can come. Okay, so your head's up, it's 137. Okay, you had a straight yeah. flush. Mm -hmm. Correct. And then the turn comes a jack of clubs, pairs the board. Okay. Um, he, he checks, cutoff checks, and then uh, I also check. And my justification is, he knows I'm a tight player. If I bet, um, and if he was bluffing, he's just going to fold. So I was trying to have him catch another diamond if he has a flush draw or maybe possibly a full house. Uh, but my main thing was him catching another card and to kind of show some weakness on my end uh, for, for a river bet. Now, the only thing I have to say about this, it, that's a very, very, I'm not a huge fan of this play. I mean, like I said, I, I like the fact that you fast played off on the flop, but like what hands here are you raising the flop with and then checking back the turn when the top pair pairs that aren't strong? Like what, I mean, I can think of maybe one specific hand. Like what, what hands are you doing that with? Uh, I mean, he knows like um, on the flop, I have at least a set, if not like a, a flush, even the ace high flush. Um, so I, I was trying to minimize my aggression to kind of, you know, play the hand a little bit tricky. He, he's, he's a pretty good player, uh, very aggressive. But if he, if he knows that I'm pretty strong, he's going to slow down completely on the river. So me checking the, the turn kind of, kind of shows some weakness um, that paired the boards. My flush may not be good anymore. Um, but here's the, okay, so here's my thinking though. I, I almost turn that around on you where if I'm your opponent, I'm actually like something bizarre is going on here when he raised the flop and checked back the turn. Here's my, here are my thoughts. The reason why that is, is because when you raise this flop, it's usually going to be somewhat value heavy, whether that's a flush, a set, a flop straight, or sometimes you'll see this dink and dunk sort of top pair raise for protection, top pair raise for protection. But the thing is, is that top pair trips up here on the turn. So all of those hands should be betting turn. Like even if you had made a raise with like King Jack, Ace Jack, something like that, you wouldn't check back the turn now that you make trips. So right away, if I was out of position and I was your opponent, I would think that something was really weird going on. So the fact that you actually check back this turn, to me as a good player, is actually less deceptive. I actually think you have maybe more of a weaker overall range by continuing to bet as opposed to checking back, if you follow me. Let me ask you this question. What's that's the, a good point. That's what's a good the point. one specific hand that actually makes sense for you to do this with where it's not a good turn card for you? Um, I mean, I would think uh, a flush. No, I, I think you keep betting with flush. Take a look at the board. It's jack, eight, seven. Well, what, what hand might you raise on the flop where you don't like this turn card here? Probably seven, eight. Seven, eight. Seven, right. eight gets counted. That was, that was the one hand, right? That was the one, one hand that I was kind of thinking about. So, I mean, like I said, I like your raise on the flop. I would have made it larger, but I got to I got to keep building here um, with such a strong nut hand. You know, even if you wanted to sort of rope them in, I would still continue to bet because, I mean, you are you got the nuts here. It's 137, you're 1,200 effective. But okay, so you check back. Now it's the river. Uh, so check back. River is eight of hearts. Okay. Um, so the... The board is uh, double paired. pairs again. Double okay. pairs. Uh, cutoff bets a hundred. Well, okay, wait a minute. Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh. So cutoff bets a hundred. Okay. So let's go over this one here. This is why this is uh, great because I mean, again, you know, part of the trying to maximize your value in poker is really, you know, putting your opponent on a specific, you know, a specific set of hands. What what are the likelihoods that they have in extracting the most amount of value from those hands? And sometimes you can have a super nut hand where a, a bet on the river it might be a small bet might be warranted just because he doesn't show up with that strong of a range that just really can call a certain situation. But let's look back at this hand here. It went Jack eight, seven, all diamonds, right? You raised the straight flush on the flop. He called the Jack now pairs on the turn and you check it back. And now the river here is an eight 
Okay, so it's double paired. So it's Jack-8-7, Jack-8. And my question to you here, uh, Ronnie, is what is the minimum holding that you think that the cutoff is now betting on this run out on Jack-8-7, Jack-8 uh, after this action? I mean, the minimum is an eight, uh, full house of an eight. I, I think that that is the absolute bear, the absolute bear minimum and he would have to have an eight here, which I actually find a little bit unlikely, um, given because I mean he'd have to have like eight nine with the nine of diamonds, eight you know some 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 sort of holding like that, right? Um, for him yeah. him to even continue on the flop. But what do you think is more likely that he has here, given this action? Possibly a jack. Yeah, a jack. I mean, my God, like this is a dream scenario by the way also too if he has a jack on jack eight seven jack eight there is no higher kicker card here where he chops to all other jacks and what i mean by that is that it, the jack eight seven jack eight is a different run out than if it was say jack eight eight jack king where someone with King Jack beats another Jack or someone with an overfull beats another uh, top full, like on a double paired board. This is just yeah. a Jack doesn't lose anything except for quad eights and a straight flush. I think it's unbelievably unlikely that he actually has an eight here. And I'm not really worried about this. The jackpot symbols are coming up in my eyes. If I am <laughs> you here in this spot. Yeah. Because I just don't, he's not betting a flush here. And, and even if he, so, so I, I mean, I don't know what you did, but I think you know what I think I would do with whatever would be like a thousand dollars behind here. Yeah. And, and this was a dream card. And, and he was, he was raising $12 pre flop for the past three hours. Every single hand uh, at this time was only five players. Um, so I assumed he was really wide, but when this when he when he bet the flop, checked the turn, he usually checks the turn to try to boat up or trying to get a stronger head on the river. So on the river when this jack or when the eight came, um, I assumed he has a full house. Okay. But uh, I wanted to at least get a call and king because he was showing me his cards, five dudes on the river. He was betting two hundred dollar raise, um, just trying to push the players out. So I assume he's probably wide, but if in the event he has a jack, I wanted to get paid. But I only I raise it to two fifty. Two fifty? Um, yeah. <laughs> to two one hundred to two fifty? Yeah, and, and, and that was the reason I called. Oh, right. I knew the river raise was horrible oh, on, on my end. I mean, I don't mean to go so I mean, I, again going back to that, I understand what you're saying is, is that well, if he has an eight, maybe he's not gonna call a jam. But again, I the reason why I one hundred percent jam here all the time without a doubt here, it's just so much more likely that he's going to have a jack given the action of he bet the flop, right, into whatever, three or four people, which is going to be much more jack heavy. And he's betting the river here too, you know, 100 into 137. It's debatable if he even bets an eight here for this particular sizing. I don't care about 8x. If I jam and he folds out 8x, whereas if I made it 250 and uh, he calls, but like a jack is going to call a shove here 100% of the time, I am shoving here all day long. So hero raised to 250. Okay, and what happened? The only thing that I mean, the only thing that could be said, although if he's if he's any if he has any experience playing poker, is that some people might say, well, if you make it like 250, maybe he'll just jam over the top of the jack, which would actually be a terrible play, because at that point your raising range here, let's say your raising range here is mostly jacks, some bluffs, and an eight that's not going to call. He's still losing the quad eights and one combo of straight flush. That's actually two combos of hands. It makes no sense to jam back with a with a jack. Yeah, and, and, and my intention for the 250 raise wasn't for him to jam back. I knew with my aggression, he would just call uh, if he had a hand. So I kind of, I guess I just wanted at least a call. Yeah, but um, we already but talked he, about what we already talked yeah. about. He's only betting a jack or, or sometimes an eight if he even, even has that, right? Correct. Yeah. So, I mean, and that's the reason for my call. I feel like I played the hand completely wrong at, on the river when I was talking to my friend about the hand. I kept replaying it over and over. I'm like, if he had anything with a, at least, a, you know, he would have called. Um, so, if I bet 250 and also, in, or, or 1,000. It's it's better to do the one thousand. Yes. If he has a jack or an eight, he calls. Well, I mean, I don't know if he's going to call with an eight, but again, if he arrives here on the river with like eighty 
percent jacks that's 100 percent calling a shove and 20 percent eights that are folding to a shove it's still a shove is profit you know gonna be the most profitable play if it's even that percentage so what ended up happening you made it 250 uh he he thought about it for like a minute um and then he kind of just reluctantly threw in uh another 150 dollars and he was shocked to see me with uh straight flush he, so he showed me the jack no, oh, sorry, he showed you a jack <laughs> yeah he showed me oh. the jack of uh jack of hearts and then oh, he showed me the other card Ronnie. Oh, Ronnie. <sighs> but yeah, I left a lot of money on the table. Yeah, I don't know what I don't know what he was tanking. I mean, I don't know if he was thinking about shoving back, but yeah, I mean, I, that uh, that's part of the reason why I picked this hand. I mean, I, I appreciate you calling it in so that we can walk through it. But I think again, hand reading comes in all forms, and I just go back to the fact that he's either has nothing, which we don't care about, right? on the river when he bets like i think we're agreeing he's not betting a flush when that's double pair he's not betting aces right so he's gonna have nothing that just folds to a raise some bullshit right like he missed the ace of diamonds or king of diamonds right he's not gonna call and then maybe slivers of 8x which we can debate but it's way more likely that his value range is a jack here and uh, i think we all agree ex including the chat that a jack is gonna call uh yeah a shove. perfectly said yeah so, so anyways exactly I, what you said appreciate the call uh thank you very much appreciate it